Hey guys, my name is Caroline and I'm a mama to twin baby girls, summer and winter. And today I have big news. We just got our very first helmet for our little winter. And it's kind of funny because summer ended up not needing it, but winter did need it. And a lot of that is because of the positioning that they were in when they were in my tummy, you know, tight spaces, twins. So bottom line, her head is slightly misshaped. And I'm just gonna introduce you to what the helmet is and what it looks like and the process that we went through it to actually get the helmet. And I'm mostly sharing this video in case anybody is just curious because you're gonna see a lot more of the helmet in my videos because she's required to wear it 23 hours every day for the next four months. <gasps> four months, Ugh, it's crazy. But with that said, if there's anybody else out there who is going through a similar process or is just curious about what the process is to get a baby helmet to help out with the shape of their head, then this video is for you. So I'm gonna share about everything that we went through from the starting process and getting the actual helmet on, what the first 24 hours looked like, and then what the first week looked like. So I'll cover all of that in this video. And as always, if you're not yet subscribed yet, please do subscribe, click that big thumbs up if you are a mama as well, and let's get to it. So the process of getting our daughter a doc band helmet started actually a while ago. And the reason for that is I noticed that her head was misshaped back when she was like three months old. And when we took both of our babies to their pediatrician appointments, we asked the pediatrician about it and she said, oh, don't worry about it. It'll just grow into the shape that it needs to be. It'll even itself out. So we said, okay, no problem. Six month appointment, we go in again and I mentioned, you know, it still hasn't evened itself out. I think it's gotten worse. One side of her head is significantly bigger than the other side in the back. And, you know, I did some research about this helmet thing and I think that she might need it. I'm not concerned about my other daughter because her head shape seems to be very round. And actually it's shocking that her head is round considering the fact that in my tummy, they were literally like yin and yang. So winter had her head down and summer had her head up so they were like this and i would have thought that summer would need it because her head was literally next to my ribs like the whole time that they were in my tummy but no she turned out to be fine and winter's head turned out to be a little bit tighter and i think it's because she was head down but with that said our pediatrician for the second time told us don't worry about it it's going to even itself out well same thing happened at nine months and we were also a little frustrated with the pediatrician for other reasons. They weren't great at communicating. They weren't great at responding or answering any of our questions. So we switched pediatricians. And guys, this is a good decision because we did switch pediatricians. And the first time that we went to our new pediatrician was at their one year appointment. And immediately I brought it up. I said, what do you think of her head? I'm a little concerned because I know it is kind of late in the game to get a doc band or a helmet you know i've read up about this and i've learned that you really should start earlier like three to six months if you can but it's hard to know because our other doctor told us it'll even itself out like probably by the time that they're a year old and here we are and it's a year and you know i was just kind of like flustered and she said well you know honestly um i would have it checked out and she took one look at her head and said yeah i think she's a good candidate to have her head looked at and she said there is hope you know, I have sent people to this place, uh, Cranial Technologies is where she referred us to. And she says, I have sent people to this place for a consultation and they have sometimes been told that they don't need it. So she's like, there is hope. Maybe she doesn't need it after all, but it can't hurt to have somebody check it out, especially because she's a year old and it still hasn't evened itself out yet by now. So we went in, we had our very first appointment, and in that first appointment at Cranial Technologies, they actually took pictures of her head by putting this, it's basically like a white sock pantyhose type material over the top of her skull. And in this, they take pictures of the exact shape of her head. So the whole point of putting the thing over her head is so they can see accurately what the shape is without her hair in the way and things like that. She hated that, of course, that I don't think is fun for any baby, but it was quick and we went ahead and analyzed all of the photos and it turns out that her head is actually on the severe side, which is lovely. So as you can imagine, I'm really, really frustrated with our first pediatrician. And I talked to the 
technician at Cranial Technologies about it and my frustration with that. And I said, you know, I don't understand why people don't know about this. You know, is this something new? And she actually did say the, the doctor that I spoke to there, I said technician, but she was actually a doctor. She said that a lot of people and even pediatricians who have been in the field for years are just not educated or aware on this specific thing because it's kind of a new concept. It's a new concept because the whole switch from laying on your tummy to laying on your back was made around the 90s. And it, while it was significantly helpful in the major realm of reducing SIDS by about 50%, by sleeping on their backs, it did introduce the new symptom, which is having a flat spot on your head or having, you know, a misshaped head because you're laying on it often. And again, I don't know if that had something to do with the fact that she has it. it if that is the case, then why don't all babies have it, right? But she said it's actually about one in two babies that do have some form of misshaped head. But with that said, only about one in 10 will actually need correction or will actually get correction. <laughs> and so it's just really interesting um, to learn about this because she said that they actually as a franchise or as a company have just been in the last few years opening up multiple different locations. I guess they've been around for like 20 years, but in Colorado where we are, they've only been open for about two years. So they said it's really relatively new and that's why a lot of pediatricians are still learning about this concept and that we can do something to fix it. So now you're educated on that. <laughs> so with that said, we looked at the pictures and from those pictures of her head, yes, it is in fact severe. <laughs> the main reason why we are really concerned about actually helping her out is it's not like it looks bad aesthetically or anything like that. Like she looks great. You would never know just looking at her that her head is misshaped, but it's actually more of a issue that could develop into something bigger down the line with their jaw line. It could be misaligned. Their ears could somehow be misaligned, which could mess up hearing. I'm not really concerned about that specifically, but also if she ever wants to go skiing or snowboarding or riding a bike, anything that involves wearing a normal helmet, it may not fit correctly, which would be really frustrating. You might have to get a custom made helmet. Or additionally, if she ends up needing to wear glasses, the glasses may not fit because, you know, anyway, so there are a lot of different reasons why we decided that yes, it would be worth it to move forward. So the next step after we had that initial appointment, that was essentially our first consultation just to see if she was a good candidate by their standards to move forward with the process and she obviously was. So after that, then we waited about a week for their insurance team to call us because how it works is they have their insurance team look at our insurance and then figure out what the cost is going to be and then they call us and let us know what that number is and then we agree if we're gonna continue to move forward now knowing that number. We have really good insurance and it ends up costing $980 for us just for our one daughter to have a helmet. How it works, at least for us, is our insurance covers about 70% of what the cost is of the helmet. So we pay out of pocket 30%. And then in addition to that 30%, we pay a $500 copay. So that's why it adds up to quite that big number. So it's not um, cheap, which is kind of a bummer, but you know what? Things are worth it. When it's worth it, you gotta do it. So I want my daughter to have all the luxuries of being able to wear helmets and being able to wear glasses in the future. And so anyway, so we said, okay, let's go ahead and move forward. And by the way, if you're going through this process and they don't call you within the week, like they said that they were going to call me within a week and they didn't, I actually called them and just said, Hey, you know, what's going on? Can we speed up this process? Cause it is time sensitive. We've already waited so long to get this going. Um, and would love to just move forward as quickly as possible. And they said, oh yeah, okay, absolutely. You know, sorry, we have a lot of people in the queue, but uh, we'll try to get you guys expedited. And I was like, thank you so much. So they actually called me then, like it was a Friday, I think that I called them. So then they contacted me on Monday and then we were able to get the next appointment scheduled for like two days later. So it really did move pretty quickly once that part happened. And at the next appointment, we went in and it actually was a longer appointment because they took more extensive pictures of her head. And the first appointment that we went to, when they took pictures of her head, like I told you, they put this like, it's like a white colored pantyhose material over her head and it had a hole for her face. 
But the next time that we went in for the second appointment, they used a similar cover for her head, but it was different in the way that it didn't have the whole cutout for her face. So it actually covered her entire head and she obviously could breathe just fine. She could see just fine, but she did not like it again as expected. So that was really hard, especially for me as a mom to have to let them kind of like manage it and step back. Like I was trying to help her out and like be there for her because she was crying and it was just like so hard, you know, it like pulls your heartstrings because you're like, I don't want my baby to be in any, you know, like I don't want her to feel unhappy or in pain or anything like that. You know, I don't want her to be scared. I think for me, it was the biggest thing. Like I don't want her to be scared because I know that this is an unknown situation and there are unknown people there. I mean, going to the doctor on its own can already be scary for a, a young baby or a toddler, but it essentially was at the point where, you know, they, they asked me, you need to um, step away and, you know, just let us work on taking pictures. And, you know, I was even trying to kind of like stand behind the lady who was trying to help her take pictures. And, and she told me, I need you to actually like stand directly behind me so your daughter can't see you because she keeps looking at you and not at the camera and we need her to look at the camera. And I was like, okay, so, you know, I stepped behind her and I'm just like <sighs> hearing her cry. It was just breaking my heart. But Luckily it was over within like another minute. So that was really good. And then they took the thing off and she just like held me like really, really tightly. And it was like a beautiful bonding moment between me and her, but I felt really, you know, like not happy about it, you know, <laughs> not happy about that, that they have to do that. But I, I understand that they have to do that just to get good pictures. Oh, and I didn't mention when they take those pictures, the baby is only wearing a diaper. And I'm not actually sure why they ask for the baby to be disclosed during the picture taking time because they're only getting pictures of the head, but it might have something more to do with like not having any clothes be in the way of getting pictures or like maybe it's for her neck because that's part of how the helmet is made. So anyway, so yeah, we had to take off all the things that she was wearing and basically put the little thing on her head and then take pictures and then the pictures turned out like really detailed and luckily they were good so we didn't have to take them again that was really good and then after that appointment then we basically just waited another week and a half let's see it was 10 days i think almost exactly to the point when we get the helmet physically on her. So they made a custom size helmet based on her exact head measurements, which they retrieved from the photos that they took of her. So that's really cool that they can actually retrieve all of the measurements that they need just from taking the photos. And then after, you know, we got to that appointment, we just basically tried on the helmet and she reacted actually pretty well. The first time that the lady walked in, she was kind of unsure. I think she recognized the doctor from the last time. She was like, I'm not so sure about you. You know, she was just kind of quiet and like kind of analyzing and looking around. And then the doctor tried putting the helmet on her and she got a little bit fussy um, just initially in that reaction. So then we went a different direction and we said, okay, how about we just let her hold it and kind of see what it's about and feel it a little bit. So, you know, she kind of touched it and she was, again, she was kind of like unsure, but then I helped put it onto her head and she was a lot more okay when it was me doing it versus the doctor doing it. So keep in mind that, you know, mama definitely try to play your role in that if you are doing this. And then once it was on, she was like, happy like she was like i don't know what this is you know she was feeling around and it was like so cute i'll actually show you a video i took a video of her in her first five minutes of having it on and she was just so cute she was essentially just looking at herself in the mirror of my camera phone and it was really fun just having that initial experience on camera and seeing how she reacted and that she was happy about it and just kind of genuinely curious you know and doctors have told us that the older that they are the more they resist the actual process just because they're more cautious and more aware of their surroundings versus younger babies are less aware and by the way actually they said that babies can get started in this process up to 18 months old. So even though we're starting a little bit on the later side, typically they recommend, you know, like around six months starting this process. And our daughter just turned 13 months. And so she is starting, you know, in that later half, but they said, you know, it could have been later. She could have been all the way up to 18 months old to get started in this process. And then the reason why they told us that she's going to need to wear it for four months straight 
is specifically because that is the max time that any baby can be in the helmet and it just has to do with how it deteriorates and not necessarily deteriorates but you have to go in for regularly scheduled appointments to actually shave out part of the inside of the foam so that it can continue to grow with her head because over the course of four months she's going to grow obviously that's the whole point so we want her to grow into the parts that are open and that's where her head needs to basically like fill in the gaps and how they do it is actually the parts that have covering on them those are the areas where her head has the extra filled in space already and there are other areas where basically they left gaps for her head to grow into to even it out so it's bigger on one side than it is on the other side so that's the side where they covered it up and then the other side is where it's like open and it'll grow into that space there so anyway she explained it to me very thoroughly it's very interesting how they do it and it's obviously all the science stuff they've already figured it out so i'm just going with it and trusting the process but yeah, she reacted really well to that. And so if for some reason after four months it does not work, then the new process would be to get a second band or to you know quit if we decide not to move forward with that. I'm hoping, I'm very, very hopeful that we won't need a second band and that four months is all we'll need and we'll call it quits at that point. And she also told me, you know, there's no guarantees that it will even it out or fix it the way that you dream of. But, you know, especially because she is already 13 months old. And again, our first pediatrician kind of held us back a lot in this process. If we would have started when she was about six months old, we probably would have only needed to wear it for anywhere between like, I don't know, 12 and 14 weeks or something. That's kind of what I've heard a lot more of with the younger babies is that they only have to have it on for a couple of months versus the full length of it. And so, you know, by the four month time, basically all of the layers have been shaved out and they just don't fit anymore. So that's why it would need to be a new helmet at that time. <gasps> what do you think? That's your new helmet. Yeah. This is the first time that you're seeing yourself. Can you see yourself right there? <laughs> yeah, that's you. Hi, hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I wonder if you recognize yourself. That's you. Yeah, hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's your helmet. Yeah, feels kind of funny, huh? Yeah? What do you think of that? Yeah, you feeling around? <laughs> so it goes all the way around. <laughs> yeah, we've got this little buckle here on the side. It's just a Velcro. It's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It goes all the way down here in the back. We made sure it's not covering your ears, although we might shave off a tiny bit here. I see it's kind of close. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah. It's kind of like a toy. It's like a toy that's attached to your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I think she actually likes it.
Yeah, you're so cute. So it's a little bit loose, but like a comfortable amount of loose so that it's, you know, comfortable and she's got a little bit of room to grow into it. Essentially, the side of her head, this side, is the side that... <laughs> yeah. First time wearing the helmet. Yeah. You seem to like it. It's pretty cute, huh? Ready? How does that sound? <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I asked about her hair because, you know, her hair is kind of long, but they said that it's okay. They said the only thing that it could cause is for it to be moving a little bit because it's there, but she said that her hair, the length that it is, is okay for now. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say mama? Mama? Dada? Dada? This is a helmet. 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 You see that? Helmet. Now don't unbuckle it. Keep the buckle on, okay? Oh yeah, there is a really extensive cleaning process. So the reason why she is supposed to wear it 23 hours every single day is because you wanna wear it as much as humanly possible for it to make the biggest difference, but she does need to have it off for one hour specifically so that we can bathe her and an hour to clean the actual helmet because you have to clean it out with a specific type of rubbing alcohol and let it air dry and then while that's happening i also need to shampoo her hair every single day now which is definitely new for us because we don't do baths every day we have twins <laughs> remember so that's definitely going to be new for us but hey we'll just be like super 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 clean so that's cool and we'll just get a new routine going and I'll definitely share those routines soon as we get in the process. So yeah, the first 24 hours went pretty smoothly. They actually tell you during the first 24 hours to take it off every three to four hours to check and see how she's doing. And I will show you how it looked. She actually had slight bit of redness in a couple of areas where she had like a couple of bumps. And in those areas where she had a couple of bumps, that is where it was just rubbing a little bit and that's why it gets a little bit red. The other type of redness that could appear is from heat and typically they do sweat a little bit and that's part of why it's important to actually like change her into less warm clothing so that she's not sweating so much and the helmet, because just imagine, it's like wearing a hat inside, you know, you're gonna heat up a little bit more having something on your head. So. Um, that's taking a little bit of getting used to in the first day. I changed her into something a little cooler immediately once we got home and I did check it after the first few hours and she had a couple little spots, but they did go away really quickly. They say if it doesn't go away after one hour, then that's when you need to consult the doctor. But as long as they go away before an hour, then that means that she's 
in the timeline that she should be and you can keep going on with the process of wearing it for another three to four hours and then checking again three to four hours checking it again and then as long as that time never goes past an hour of having something not recover of like little red spots or something then she can completely sleep in it throughout the first night and this actually continues for the second day and so that's how the first two days look and then after that once you know again if everything is going smoothly the way it's supposed to then starting the third day is when she starts wearing it for 23 hours straight with having the one hour to take it off and check it out and I asked the doctor things like you know can I take her swimming or can we do like outdoor activities or like what if she falls you know I just wanted to make sure that like I know all the things with the swimming she said no it really can't get wet but just take it off it's fine just as long as most of the time you're adhering to the 23 hours a day that's the main thing or make that part of your one hour if you're gonna go swimming or something like make that part of the bathing time or something like that you know and then as far as if she falls or something and like you know bumps it she said it's really sturdy so I wouldn't worry too much about that it, you know in a way it kind of is a helmet so that's cool that's what we've learned so far and I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording right now and I'm gonna check back in with you in one week to let you know an update hey guys okay so I am checking in one week later so we've had little winters duck band helmet on her head for about one week now and the first 24 hours first 48 hours actually went really really smoothly those were kind of like the two days to test it out and check every few hours to see how she's doing make sure that the red spots don't last longer than an hour all of them did go away really quickly and most of the time her red spots that she had only lasted about 10 minutes and then we were able to put the band back on and it was fine and then after that first 40 hours you're able to keep it on for the full 23 hours while still checking it I do usually take it off first thing in the morning when she wakes up just to check her head make sure it's okay I usually take a dry washcloth and kind of just making sure that there's not like sweat in her hair or anything like that kind of just making sure to dry everything out I kind of do the same thing on the inside of the helmet just to make sure that it's dry and it's not collecting a sweat from her head or anything like that when she was sleeping the other thing I should mention is that it never impacted her sleep so she's actually been sleeping through the night just as she always has and it didn't make a difference so that was really nice and such a relief because we weren't sure if it was gonna make an impact at all on her sleeping habits but so far so good so that's great and and then throughout the day she keeps it on for 23 hours every day the one hour that it is off is the time that we give her a bath like I told you before it's kind of the cleaning maintenance process that we go through so we clean the inside of the helmet with the 70% rubbing alcohol and then we also give her a bath and we do shampoo her hair every single evening so yeah I'd say so far it's going smooth we haven't had our first checkup appointment yet we do have those scheduled for three weeks in so we have that in about another two weeks and then subsequently we have them every three weeks after that so I can let you know more updates as we go if you would like to hear anything else about the process that we're going through and what kind of impact it's making let me know in the comments below I would love to share as much value as I can with you guys and just again let people know about this process and learn more about it because I wasn't super aware of it our pediatrician wasn't super aware of it so we're just learning as we go and we know that we're doing the right thing for our daughter to help her have a nice shaped head so that she can do all the things and not have jaw issues and just you know be a normal kid so we're doing our best and going with the flow and yeah thanks so much for watching i hope that you did find this valuable and helpful if you're in the similar process of doing this with your baby and yeah again if you have any questions or you want me to share anything specific let me know in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time thanks guys have a great day bye can you say hi my name is winter and i am wearing a helmet yeah and it's my very first helmet any other helmet mamas out there, say hey.